Hey guys, Spirit of the Lie here. In this video, we're going to take a look at the new dynasties of India civilizations and how they've been performing on the ranked ladder. At this point, we have not one, but two different community created sites tracking the win rate data, with now enough games played to start seeing some patterns. One site is Age of Statistics, which I've talked about many times before, and has lots of nice breakdowns by ELO and game length, etc., which can help piece together not only how civs are performing, but also why. The other is a new site called agestats.net, which gives an alternate presentation of the data. And with things like this, having multiple sites with slightly different methodologies just helps give a little bit more confidence in any patterns we find. Now, while the Age Vampires developers have been getting a lot better with balance at release in the newer expansions, three and a half new sieves all at once is quite ambitious, and I imagine it's hard to get the balance just right. So let's dig into the stats and see how things are going so far. We'll go through the new sieves alphabetically, starting with the Bengalis. This is hands down the most elephant focused of the new sieves, though they're also unique for their Wrath Chariot that can switch between ranged and melee mode. From Age of Statistics though, it seems Bengalis are dead last in open maps, which is mostly reflective of Arabia games, though there are a couple of other maps thrown in there as well. Alternately, AgeStats.net has Bengalis performing a bit better on Arabia specifically, which is generally considered the gold standard for land map balance discussions. Either way, there's a pretty clear picture that Bengalis are the worst open map land sieve at the moment. On the bright side though, they've actually been pretty average on closed maps, which reflects Arena, Hideout, and Hillfort. That suggests a healthy potential to boom their economy, but they're a little vulnerable to early pressure, which is a discrepancy usually associated with a weak Dark Age economy. Bohemians and Portuguese have a similar sort of dichotomy, and both are known for having a slow start. For Bengalis, they receive two free villagers after they advance as their main civ bonus, but of course that doesn't help until feudal, and even then it'll take a few minutes to start to really feel the effects of that adding up. If we break things down by elo and game length in open maps, it's really not that they're getting crushed at any particular time in the game. They're just underperforming overall, at really any skill level. The one exception is games lasting an hour or longer, where they start to improve dramatically, maybe partly thanks to their population efficiency with more villagers and powerful elephants. At the same time, I think the elephants are probably a big factor in their general weakness though. They're expensive, hard to get going, and even with Bengali's bonus damage reduction, they're still countered pretty well by spear units and skirmishers in the case of the elephant archer. Outside of elephants, they're not really a notable archer sieve, lacking thumbring, and their stable is also quite limited. The Wrath Chariot is probably the most interesting unit they have, though again the fact they take both anti-cavalry and anti-archer bonus damage is a serious drawback. I've seen them do some good work when raiding, but the data overall suggests it's certainly not an overpowered unit. These results haven't been a huge surprise, as nothing about Bengalis really jumped out initially, and it was always a question of how good their free villager bonus was going to be. I'm expecting something pretty significant down the road to buff Bengalis, as it's such an outlier in 1v1 open maps. Again though, in closed maps they're instead pretty average, as you'll be up 4 villagers by 15 or 16 minutes in a fast castle, and their extra 2 villager bonus also applies to each town center you have, so it's still useful when hitting Imperial Age, as it can give you 6 or even more villagers instantaneously. I think the trick in balancing them is going to be helping them out on Arabia without making them too good in team game closed maps, where elephants, free late game villagers with a higher population cap, and a trade bonus all have a lot more synergy. But now let's move on and take a look at the Dravidians. They're also doing relatively poorly, but not as bad as Bengalis overall. On 1v1 open maps, they're a fringe bottom 5, with 44-45% to win rate. Agestats.net has them a little higher on Arabia specifically, and everyone's site is going to have slightly different methodology. All of the stats available though agree they're a little underpowered. For closed maps, it's a pretty similar story, keeping in mind some very large error bars, as the open map sample size is about 6 times larger than for closed maps. To dig a bit deeper, Dravidians are pretty consistently weak across ELO ratings, but actually have an interesting profile based on game length. If it's not clear, this is showing what percent of games they win that end at a certain game time, and notice they're significantly above average in games ending around 20 minutes, or seemingly earlier. That definitely speaks to the strength of some combo of their free 200 wood bonus when hitting feudal, cheaper barracks upgrades, and possibly their faster attacking skirmishers. You can imagine going men at arms into a mix of archers and skirmishers is going to take advantage of all of those bonuses back to back. After that though, it seems once everyone's in castle age, they're unable to maintain that pressure. I'd argue though they remain a decent archer civilization with lots of options and fully upgraded arbalesters, and it's really the stable that's dragging them down. Interestingly, Woot Steel and their very powerful unique unit, at least in melee combat, aren't really showing up in the data as a late game power spike. 
Notably though, if we looked at closed maps like Arena and specifically team games, their late game is quite good, with their team winning about 60% of the time in games lasting an hour and reaching that post-imperial stage. This is actually a pattern that shows up in many quote infantry civs, though I'm sure the faster attacking skirmishers and elephant archers are contributing a bit here as well. Of course, while they're an infantry civ on land, Dravidians are also primarily meant to be a naval civilization. If we look just at water maps on islands, four lakes, and migration, they're consistently right near the top. So it seems their water game is quite strong as expected, given their large number of bonuses, though without looking broken, which is nice to see. Good job by the balance team to get that right on the first try. So far though, we have the sense the devs may have gone a bit too conservative with the new civs, but wait for it, the next two tell a bit of a different story. We'll look first at the Gurjars. They have a very unusual start, with two forge bushes, garrisoning sheep in mills for passive food, more bonus damage from mounted units like the camel, and three unique units. So there was a lot to consider in getting the balance just right with this civ. To start with, on 1v1 open maps, Age of Statistics has them as the number two civ at the moment. At the same time, AgeStats.net puts them at number 4 on Arabia, but keep in mind this site includes all ELO ratings, while Age of Statistics only uses 1200 ELO and up. But either way, it's clear they're doing very well on open maps. Likewise, they're doing great on closed maps, so they really seem able to boom as well as anyone, in addition to playing for aggression. Their peripheral stats show they're really crushing it in 30 minute long games, which implies a lot of their wins are coming in Castle Age. To what degree that's reflecting their unique units, or if this is their camel's bonus damage helping them beat knight sieves isn't obvious from this alone. It's very tempting to assume this is just them beating up on franks and other cavalry sieves, which are especially popular and successful at lower elo ratings, but the stats really don't support that narrative. If we look at how they perform in open maps against every other civilization, they only have a slight edge against franks, with around a 51% win rate. So it's not a particularly good matchup for them, despite the very obvious advantage a camel civ should have against a knight civ. If we highlight what I'd consider a sample of good cavalry civs, I don't notice an overwhelming pattern that Gujars are especially good against them. And in fact, some of their toughest matchups are against civs that often use a lot of stable units, like Slavs, Tudans, and Hindustanis. That's not to say that Gurjars are bad against cavalry civs, but that they seem to be able to handle just about anyone. Another interesting pattern that jumps out is that they seem to improve at higher levels of play. We've seen this before with the Chinese, and it may be their unusual start in action, or it could be the trickiness in making the most of their unique units, but we see in both their win rate and popularity as you go from 900 ELO to 1600 players, they're picked more often and win at a higher rate as well. Considering the devs tend to put extra emphasis on higher elos when it comes to balanced decisions, I wouldn't be surprised to see some sort of nerf, especially since when you filter to just 1600 elo and up, Gurjars are technically number one at the moment. Of course, you can see from all of the overlapping error bars, they could really easily settle anywhere in the top five, as 1600 elo and higher data always struggles to get a good sample size. That's the Gurjars, and finally, we'll finish up with the Hindustanis, which, as hard as this is to believe, may actually be even better. To start with, on 1v1 open maps with 1200 rating and up, Hindustanis are number one by a comfortable margin, though they're a little behind Gujars on closed maps, so maybe Gujars are still best overall. On Arabia specifically, opening things up to all elos, Age of Stats puts them at number two overall, and if we make things completely wide open to include every map, elo, and ranked 1v1 game played in the last month or so, they're again number one. The point is, there's different ways to look at the data, but all of it points to another top tier civilization. Keep in mind, Indians were already near the top of the ladder even before receiving faster attack on their camels, a new archer-resistant unique unit, and their scout line gaining extra attack against buildings. I think their new Ghulam really shouldn't be overlooked, as it gives them a pairing that can counter both knights and archers, which is a combo we've seen working for Gurjars as well. Both civs also have advantages against buildings, with the Hindustani's team bonus and the Gurjars battle elephant dealing much more damage to buildings than a battering ramp thanks to a civ bonus. Digging deeper into game length, it seems around 45 minutes is when Hindustanis peak. This suggests a strong early to mid imperial age when their good gunpowder can really start to contribute. Interestingly, if we compare Hindustanis to how Indians were doing last fall, Indians didn't have that early imperial age gunpowder boost to the same degree, but were a little better in one hour post imperial sorts of games, which I actually find surprising as Hazars with plus two against buildings sounds quite strong to me in a trash fight. Similar to Gajars, they also seem to perform better, if anything, in higher rated games, though they don't have as dramatic of a rise in play rate and are just consistently a popular pick. Also, similar to Gajars, it's not that they're just beating up on Franks and other popular cavalry civilizations. While Hindustanis are favored in that matchup, it's certainly not one of their best. 
Of course, you could flip that around to the Franks perspective, in which case, yes, Gurjars and Hindustanis are some of their least favorite opponents. The larger point is that the new civs aren't the best because they're beating popular civs like Franks, instead they're just beating up on everybody. Again, like Gurjars, they may warrant a nerf, and especially the fact they're strong at higher levels makes them, I think, a more likely candidate for that. So altogether, you could argue the Indian civs as a group are collectively well-balanced, having a combined 51% win rate across all ELO ratings and maps. They're even trailing cavalry and camel civs as a whole, so if you combine their stats, they really don't look overpowered. That said, upon closer inspection, this is really the story of two civs that are too strong and two civs that are too weak, at least on open maps. The balance on closed maps though is a bit better, but for Bengalis, it really seems like they're calling for an early game buff, and Gujars and Hindustanis could probably be weakened to some degree if the current trend persists, though I wouldn't say they're outright broken. That'll do it for this one though, and if you're interested in playing around with either of those sites in more depth, I'll have them linked below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.